In a recent podcast episode that I did for Flipping 50, my guest is an expert on eating disorders, eating disorder recovery, and identifying everything from triggering disordered eating to actually coming up with ways to resolve the problem and be recovered as opposed to in recovery. Because this is an issue that comes up so very often for coaches and for trainers. I asked her to stay a little bit longer in our interview, and these questions are just for you. In this episode, that's just a very short one intended for health coaches and trainers, whether about clients or perhaps about you, we will link to the full-blown episode in Flipping 50. I'm Deborah Atkinson. You're listening to She Means Fitness Business Podcast. Previously, that's been Fitness Marketing Mastery and Voice for Fitness Professionals Podcast. We've been at this for about nine years. Collectively, between the two podcasts mentioned earlier, Flipping 50, we have nearing 3 million downloads. And that says something for longevity for consistency that I wish to you in your business as well. We're going to dive into this. My guest is Mindy Gorman Pletzer. She brings two decades of experience to her private practice as a certified functional nutrition and lifestyle practitioner and eating psychology coach. Mindy's own life experience and training inspired her to create a framework that combines functional nutrition, positive psychology, and mind-body science introducing a compassionate resolution to physical and emotional challenges resulting from chronic and complex health issues as they relate to eating disorders. She's the author of The Freedom Promise, Seven Steps to Stop Fearing What Food Will Do to You and Start Embracing What It Can Do for You. Let's dive into this short Q&A. Mindy, thanks so much for being here. Thank you, Deborah. So happy to be So you are really talking here to a group of women who are listening, who are either wanting to or are already health coaches, fitness coaches, trainers, maybe small studio owners who see a lot of midlife women specifically. They're probably working with women who are in midlife, maybe of all ages, but that's who they cater to. If you could talk about the likelihood that one of their clients might be dealing with disordered eating or a literal clinical definition of an eating disorder, what would you like them to know? The the greatest gift they can give their client would be to engage in active listening and to really work hard at leaving any kind of bias that they might have about food and diet and weight behind. Understanding that there's a good likelihood that the women that they're working with are engaged in some sort of disordered eating behavior, if not a flat out eating disorder. And of course we can talk about the differences But by disordered eating behavior, that could be anything from a less obsessive chronic restrictor, um, somebody who occasionally loses herself to food at night with a couple of glasses of wine uh, in front of the TV set after a tough day, or the, the woman who might grab a bag of chips or a container of ice cream after having an argument with her husband or her children. Um, or the woman who is constantly on a new diet. You know, I read about this diet. I'm going to, I'm trying it this week. Um, my sister's cousin's niece lost 30 pounds on this diet. It's the greatest thing I'm doing it. Those are red flags to look at. And I think as fitness professionals, health coaches, healthcare professionals, we have a duty to really become active listeners and understand the story of the person we're working with, the belief system that they're carrying, in this case, about body and food, and not only help them to think about what they're eating, 
but how are they eating? Who are they as eaters? How are they eating? Why are they eating? When are they eating? So how are they eating? We can help our clients by teaching them to slow down, to really chew their food well, and to be totally present, engage the senses, taste, temperature, texture. I always remind my clients to pay attention to. Why are they eating? Are they physically hungry? Or are, is it about mind-heart hunger, otherwise known as emotional hunger? And when are they eating? Are they giving themselves enough time in between meals to fully digest? Are they of the mindset that they need to eat six small meals a day when they're really not allowing their digestion to do what it needs to do? Are they eating all their calories later in the day? That's a, another thing that we can um, be mindful of. So. Who are they as eaters? The other thing about who are they as eaters, when it comes to who's choosing, who's making the choices of what they're putting into their bodies, is it the petulant child? Is it the rebellious teenager? Or is it the woman who wants to step into the best version of herself? So before we can recommend any kind of nutritional pro protocol or exercise routine, we want to make sure it's appropriate for who they are as an eater. So very good. And as you were talking, this came to me and I want to make sure our listeners, you're aware there is a full length podcast going into this topic that Mindy and I did at Flipping 50. We'll link to that in the show notes. These questions are just for you about working behind the scenes with a client. Mindy, can you comment on this? So obviously to help someone, someone has to want help. How, I'm not sure this is a fair question, but I'm going to ask it anyway, because I don't play fair. How okay. often do you find someone does have disordered eating, but that is defined by someone other than them and they're not ready to change. And when you do find that, what would be the best thing for a trainer or health coach to do? I would question not the resistance, but I would get curious about the reward in the behavior. How is the behavior serving them? Great comment. Thank you so much. What what would be examples? And I'm going to kind of circle back. So in your response to what would you like health coaches and trainers to know, you mentioned the best gift that they could give is active listening. And I'm going to guess all of our listeners have gone through certifications and or may also have a four-year degree, maybe even a background in counseling. But for anybody who doesn't, and just we should brush up, could you give a couple examples of active listening? The, the best thing I can think of to describe it would be for the practitioner to be listening with an open heart and an open mind, ready to ask the right questions. And sometimes we need to ask more questions before we can give answers. I remember when I started out, um, I started doing nutritional counseling about 27 years ago, way before I knew anything about health coaching. It wasn't until about, I guess now, 12 years ago that I was certified as a health coach. And um, when I started, it was all about me telling people to eat this, don't eat that. And I was very uncomfortable when there was silence during the session. It wasn't until I became a busy health coach and then later got additional certifications in eating psychology and functional medicine nutrition that I learned that it was more important to ask the right questions than it was to straight off the bat give recommendations. And I think it's also a very, very helpful for our clients if we help them to learn to ask questions of themselves. Awareness is key. There, there's, no, there's no healing without awareness. But with awareness must come curiosity. 
beautifully said. And so much richness here in what you've given to embellish on the interview that you and I did with Flipping 50. I want to ask you one more question. And I ask this delicately and respectfully of all of our listeners. But I will often say we're often doing the thing, teaching the thing we needed, we wish we'd had, and we have specific insights based on our own challenges, maybe in the past or currently. So a coach or a trainer could easily and often feel all eyes are on me. There is pressure for looking a certain way that can make them also hyper aware of their own food issues and or spiral into restrictive eating or trying every cleanse or fast or protocol on on the market. What do you recommend of a trainer or health coach who is in a position where they can probably still offer some good and benefit to other people, but is actually in that moment themselves? That's such a great question. Such a great question. First of all, um, I hope that the listeners to this part of, of our conversation will go back and listen to the Lane's podcast because I talked there and I, I just made a, a quick reference to the difference between doing recovery and being recovered. Mm-hmm. You know, being requires an internal shift. But in order to be, there are things that we need to do. The idea is to make the changes in such a way that they become empowering, empowered choices. So I think if one of your trainers, one of your students finds herself in a situation where she's feeling triggered and she's being called back to the obsessive behaviors that she knows don't serve her, but are serving a purpose. It's important to really dig deep. She knows what her story is, how she got there. Really do some discovery around the context of how these thoughts and behaviors are developing and understand that they are simply a story. I liken it to the story of the big bad wolf, right? You, you tell the bedtime story and you tell it so well, you use voice inflection and you do such a great job of telling this story so that the person you telling the story to the child telling the story to is so petrified that little red riding hood is not is going to be eaten up by the big red wolf and not make it to a grandma's house. So you tell the story, you close the bedroom door, and then a, li- a little later the little girl comes out and she says, I'm so afraid of the big bad wolf. Well, what do you do? You tell her it's only a story. And I think that's what we need to remember when we are having those thoughts and those beliefs come back and the voice, the voice of the eating disorder that is so strong that really wants to convince you that you can't live without her. Develop your healthy voice. Become an observer to your behavior. When you step back and become an observer, it's easier not to fall prey to default behavior. So very good. I so hope I answered good. the question correctly. Yeah. Absolutely. Okay. Yeah. I, I thank you so much. And I think you're, you're also potentially laying it down that you are a soft spot to land. So <laughs> for, for listeners, we're going to put the links below this show as well. And that will be at fitnessmarketingmastery.com forward slash disordered eating, where you can learn from both sides you know, tips to working with your clients who have disordered eating, as well as, you know, where you might go to help yourself if for some reason you're being triggered. And Mindy, do you want to tell listeners the best links to get a hold of you? We'll, We'll, of course, put everything in the show notes, but where's the best place to get a little bit more information? Basically, the best place is through my website, thefreedompromise.com. They can download a whole bunch of free guides um, at thefreedompromise.com forward slash guide. There's my story, the 
framework of my seven steps to stop fearing what food will do to you and start embracing what it can do for you. A lot of videos, lots of food for thought. Uh, there's a blog section. And if you download the guide, you will then, with your permission, be put on my list so you will receive twice monthly um, newsletters, but you'll get special announcements. You'll be invited to special events that I will be hosting in the coming months. And uh, I'd love to have you part of the community. I also have a Facebook group, uh, the Free- Stop Fear and Food, the Freedom Promise Way. So um, there's a link to join there on the website as well. Website hosts everything. Can I just say one more thing, though? Please. I, I wanted to say uh, from your question about the trainers and practitioners being triggered. When we're triggered that way, and I am triggered myself too, even after all these years of considering myself recovered, there are times when I'm pulled back. That can only happen when we disconnect from the wisdom of our bodies. So if you find yourself in a position where you are thinking, oh, gee, that cleanse looks great, or I'm going to cut out carbs, Whatever, whatever it might be that is your go-to, be aware of the fact that you are no longer listening to the wisdom of your body. You're listening to a very strong, disordered voice that you need to say to, thank you for your service. You're no longer needed. <laughs> Amen. Amen. So very good. Mindy, thank you again for being here. Listeners, this has been an extra bonus. So Mindy didn't know if she signed on for this, and I begged her to come over and do something extra special for you because we will deal with this. You know, in our lifetime, we'll continue to deal with this in the culture we are and learning how to realize, I mean, you're not immune to the changes that come to women and give yourself a little bit of grace and get the help you need when you need it. You can again find the show notes for today's episode at fitnessmarketingmastery.com forward slash disordered eating. And what are you waiting for? The world needs us right now more than ever.